Burr, 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 burr. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. It's question and answer time. Let's get into this. So welcome back to the Q&A. It's the place where you guys submit your questions about dance, about my life, about your life, about anything really that you want to ask questions about. Welcome back. So if you want to submit a question for the future, leave them down in the comments. Hit me up on Instagram, at Robert Moraine. No spaces, no underscores, nothing like that. Let's get into the first question. First question is coming from Betolaz. Which color it's your favorite? I know I'm wearing red at the moment, but I really love me some blue. Next question is coming from Mickey Daydreamer for, I can't see the rest of what it says, Mickey Daydreamer. Who is your ideal in dance field? I guess you could say my ideal was Green Tech a few months ago when I did the first q and I, I mentioned that I was a fan of Green Tech and he was my number one favorite dancer in the world. But I think things have changed. I really like what Philip Chabib has been doing. He's like groundbreaking uh, in all styles of dance. So I have to give my respects and pay, and pay dues to Philip because he's killing it at the moment. And uh, a runner up would be E.T. E.T. has been killing it in the bone breaking world. He's one of those people that dance while, while he bone breaks. Big up E.T., big up Philip Chabib. Let's get into the next question. Next question is coming from Piyush Rathwa. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. I tried. I really did. I, I sat. I just. I did it like five times. Piyush. Piyushrathwa. 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 Is that necessary to do proper transition in dance? When I focus too much on music, I can't do proper transition. I'd say it takes time to get good transitions. And it is important, these transitions are important. It's important to be musical. It's important to be free when you dance and not be in your head. Become the music, let the music guide you. Thanks for asking your question. Let's get into the next question. Next question's coming from Zyman4578. What are my dance inspirations? You asked what, you didn't ask who. So at the moment, my dance inspirations are YouTube videos, uh, straight up. That's the number one source of my inspiration that I use for dancing. I watch vlogs, which somehow inadvertently inspire me because just the tone of most vlogs are really positive in general, at least the ones that I watch and subscribe to. So that positivity lifts me up and it makes me go outside and go do something. And usually it's filming a video and usually it's uploading to YouTube that gets me out the door and wanting to go dance these days. I know that sounds kind of weird, but that's the reality and that's what inspires me these days. So thanks for asking. Let's get into the next question. Next question is coming from Tommy Zed. You're dancing in front of a green screen. What would be your dream background? Imagine being able to be magically whisked away to Delaware. Hi, I'm in Delaware. Something like that. Next question. Next question is coming from Katie Mac Johnson. Who is your favorite boy band? Oh, you got me here. This is going to be embarrassing. Next question is coming from Basil Graham. You had a knee injury a few months ago. What really happened? As you know, I work at the Crazy Horse in Paris and it is a cabaret, and I do an act there, I do my dancing there, and I, has, I do another act there as well, which is, involves my, my hat tricks, hat manipulation, hat juggling, whatever you want to call it. And uh, I, I take a volunteer up on stage, and one night I was running into the audience to go find my victim, and I literally tripped on a stair inside the cabaret, and all my weight landed on my knee, and ended up tearing my posterior ligament in my left knee. But it was a minor tear, I didn't have to get surgery, and I was able to work again a month and a half later. 
It was a pretty big bummer. It's still a little bit weird. If I haven't been doing any crazy floor moves or knee moves in any of my latest videos because of that. But because of this, I've been able to shift my focus on other things like my gliding and things where I don't use my knees too much. So I'm improving in those areas at least while I recover from this. So thanks for asking, Bezel. Next question. Next question is coming from Selly Cell. Mr. Fantastic, do you still go by that name? I have been Mr. Fantastic for probably about 11 years. I changed my name from Toxic. I thought it was cool because it had to do with glow sticks because I thought glow sticks were cool. Non-toxic, toxic. Okay, so I decided that it would be a good marketing idea to change my name. And since I'm flexible, and stretchy like Mr. Fantastic, the Marvel superhero from the Fantastic Four, I decided to name myself after this superhero. And a lot of people in, in general <laughs> don't realize that I named myself after this superhero. And so they think it's just, a, I, put, I picked a pretentious name for myself, <laughs> Mr. Fantastic. Dun, da, da, da. But yeah, the reality is I do go by Mr. Fantastic. Next question. So the next question is coming from Awake My Soul. What's one of your most favorite possessions you have? A knickknack, a poster, a t-shirt, etc. One of my most prized possessions I have by far, and it's no lie, it's these, the glasses, the original chameleon shades. These were the, I think I wore these, no, I didn't wear these ones on So You Think You Can Dance, but these were the ones that I wore in everything since So You Think You Can Dance. I wore the orange ones on, on the show, and uh, I had these ones, and I, I was like saving them for another time, but I never had a chance to wear them again on American TV. But these are my most prized possessions because I don't have any other ones, including the red ones. These are my last pair, other than the ones I'm getting made, which I'll do a video on another time but these are actually my most prized possession. It's been at least 10 years. These are like part of my character. These are like, these, these are, these, this is what makes my act happen. So, you can tell that I really love those glasses. I think they have a lot to do with my success. Isn't that weird? So I guess they must be good luck. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Okay, next question. Next question's coming from Rick Sharma, 27. When you perform at the stage for the first time, how much time are you taking for your stage choreography? I think what you're asking is, if you're performing on stage for the first time, what's a good length for your choreography? This really depends. Don't take my word for it. I don't know how long you've been dancing. I don't know what your skill level's like. I don't know how good you are at choreography. But judging by your question, it sounds like you're a newish dancer, a novice dancer, not been dancing too long if you're doing your first performance. I would keep it short. I'd say a good dance solo performance is around four to five minutes. That's me personally. I don't like watching anything longer than that because it starts to get stale no matter how great the dancer is, unless he's just doing a bunch of stuff that's just insane. But if you're doing your first choreography, first time on stage, I would keep it relatively short. I would say not longer than two and a half minutes, but not shorter than 30 seconds. I mean, it's a performance, so do at least a minute, but make that minute count and practice really hard because one of the first things that happens when you're performing on stage for the first time or battling for the first time is you lose focus and you lose your choreography that you had in your head. So I would really practice super hard if it's your first one and uh, yeah, good luck. Next question. Next question is coming from Jordan Draper. When you battled Philip the second time around, did you freestyle most of it? Yeah, I freestyled the whole entire time when I battled Philip Chibib for the second time in the real battle at Claws Out. Yeah, it was a freestyle, just like every time I've ever battled. So thanks for asking, Jordan. So uh, next question. <laughs> Next question is coming from Filthy Turtle. Northeast LA represent. <laughs> Next question is coming from Big Jefferson. Con gente o Brasil? Do I know Brazil? I do know of Brazil, but unfortunately, I have never visited Brazil, and I would absolutely love 
to come to Brazil. I would love to go to Sao Paulo, Rio, and all of the places that I have no idea about because it looks like a beautiful country. Like, you guys have the Amazon, the rainforest, the, the crazy river, all of that. Yes, please. Next question. Next question's coming from Mojo Murali. You still remember the routine from your audition at So You Think You Can Dance? How would you rate it today? I do remember my routine very well from So You Think You Can Dance. It was a life-changing moment for me. And how would I rate it today? I would rate it good. I thought I did pretty well for, at, for the level I was at back then. I don't mean to sound arrogant about that, but yeah. Pat myself on the back for that one because it got me to where I am today. So thanks for asking, dude. Next question. Next question's coming from, this is the last question, coming from emmydesigner.io. Emmy's the homie, he's the one that I collabed with on Weirdo Tokyo, as well as Brainwaves. So go check those out because Emmy edited them and filmed them and he's an awesome videographer. He like runs around, he's like working harder than me, sweating just like I am. Go check out Emmy Designer. His question is, you love me? LOL. I do love you. So that was the last question. Thank you guys all for submitting. If you'd like to submit a question for a future Q&A episode, please leave them in the comments down below. Hit me up on Instagram in my DMs. Drop me a line, drop me a question. I prefer if they're dance related because most of my audiences are dancers and you guys tend to lean towards my educational videos, my tutorial stuff, my reactions and critiques, and the Q and A's that are relevant to popping and relevant to bone breaking and relevant to what I do. So if you have any questions that are dance related, professional dance related, anything like that, please leave them in the comments. And uh, until next time, Peace out.